Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG Games, and I'm going to be doing a brand new tutorial series on an introduction into Blender. Now, since my game asset creation tutorial series took off so much, and you guys really like the Blender tutorial, I figured I might as well do the Blender tutorial. So, here we go. If you don't know what Blender is, Blender is the free open source um, content, 3D content creation software. Uh, at least that's what their subtitle is. And it's a very good software. You can use it to do VB, via um, virtual effects. You can use it to do like science. And you can use it to design characters and make movies. And the, the things you can do with it are just about infinite. Besides like writing and stuff. That's different. So now what we are going to do. Sorry. Is we are going to open up Blender. I'm going to minimize this. And if I click on this Blender icon you will see that a splash screen comes up. And this is Blender's way of knowing which version it is because you can see that it has this picture and this version up here, and that's really helpful. And that's really, really useful because you can use this um, because this changes from time to time. You don't even have to look up here. You can just look right here and know if it's the same version as you. So now I'm... To get out of this, you can just click out. You can also um, get rid of that splash screen, but I like it because he's kind of cute. Or her. you got to be gender equal there. So now, here we have. We have the Blender viewport. Now, you will notice that there are tons of buttons and tabs, but do not let that give you fear because that's very important. Everything has, and it's actually kind of good that they have all those, and you'll see that each of these has a certain purpose. Okay, so now we're going to jump in. To move around, um, to pan, you use shift and middle mouse, and that allows you to pan. That's a very useful tool. To rotate, you to rotate, this is rotating your scene view, it's middle mouse down, and you just move around with the mouse. And then to zoom, it's mouse wheel. Now, if you're like me and you have a MacBook, then you'll have a trackpad. And the trackpad is actually works on all systems um, like Windows and Mac and even Linux the trackpad works so I'm gonna unplug my mouse right here and I'm going to sorry and if I the um, the Mac trackpad you have to hold down control in order to do it but that's usually what it is and then to hold down shift and you can rotate and it works perfect and that's really good so I'm just gonna plug that mouse back in and get back to using that so now that we have this, um, I'm going to jump into the next thing, and that is how to this. So the different we have different windows. This is the main things that you will be using. Now you see we have three. Uh, we have a bunch of tabs. We have the ones I'm going to talk about though are the tools and the create the top two because these the last four um, we aren't going to get into this tutorial, and I don't even think in this series. So. The tools will give you all the tools necessary, like the title says, to be able to use your, um, to mess around with your object. So like if I click this trans translate button, I can now move the mouse button and it will move the object around. Now also, if I, and same goes for rotate and scale. And those are very useful tools. Now those also have key codes. So the key code for moving is G. And if you just click inside the viewport, that works. R is for rotate. And S is for scale. Okay, so now this is useful. But let's say you wanted to do something directly from the side. And that's always useful to do something directly from the side. But the problem is you can kind of line it up, but you also can't. So here's one of my tips that I have, and I think I said this in my Game Asset Creation, but if you haven't seen those tutorials, I highly suggest you go check those out. Those are really good tutorials. But one of the things I like to do is I hit Command Comma, or Control Comma if you're on a PC, and that will open up your user preferences. Now on the Input tab, you can go down here to say Emulate Numpad. Now the Emulate Numpad basically takes the Windows Numpad on the, de on the um, desktop computers, and uses it for and converts them in uses the number keys on what this is useful for laptops so I'm gonna 
get out of this by clicking the X. And now you can see that I have mine emulated. I'm going to hit 5, and that will put me into orthographic view. And then I can press 1 to put us into front view, 3 to put us into right view, 2 to put us, and then 2 rotates us on like this, 4 rotates us along the z-axis. Another thing to note is that the z-axis is up and down. Normally it's the y-axis, but the z-axis is up and down. So that's something to note. And then um, 6 rotates the other way, 7 goes to the top view, 8 goes the opposite way of 3, I mean not, 4, and then, and then 7 does top, and those are very useful for modeling. So now I'm going to get into the windows. So we had the translate, rotate, and scale, and then we have all of those. Those are the only main ones. And then we have the create. Now this is all the stuff you can make with this. But one of the things is you, um, you have all of these. Now what I want to do, sorry, is this is very useful, but you wouldn't want to go into create all the time. I mean, I guess you can, but it'd be slower. So Blender actually added a method for fixing this, and that is Shift A. And you get all of these, and you can actually have add-ons that put stuff in here, like bombs and projectiles and stuff like that. And those are really cool. And those are actually um, those are things in Blend. Those are um, that's an add-on, so I don't know exactly which one that is, but that is a Blender add-on, so you have to add it on. That's not built in, so do not fear. So now I'm going to go add a mesh. I'm going to click on plane. Now I have my setting. My settings are screwed up, so it actually doesn't like the rotation. It always seems to like to face the direction. So I'm going to set this to zero zero zero. And, therefore, and now I have a perfectly flat plane. So I'm going to hit G, I'm going to hit Z, and I'm going to move it down to where it's underneath. And now I can scale it up as much as I want, but I'm going to say 25. Actually, I'm going to go over here and set this to 10 by 10. 10 by 10. That's fair. All right. So now we have this plane and it looks really cool, but there's not much we can do with just these basic objects like the cube. But there is a way to do stuff with this. I'm gonna, if you hit tab, it will open up this. And this is the edit mode. You'll notice down here that you have a bunch of different modes. The only ones you need to know to be able to work Blender is object and edit mode. Object allows you to place objects well and have their origin points stay the same, while edit mode allows you to mess around with the vertices and change the mesh entirely. So if I subdivide this, it adds more vertices, but it does them in squares. Well, there's a way around this, like let's say you wanted to do tri a triangles on the middle. Then you just click on knife or K and then you start up here at this top and you, go all, you can go all the way down to this bottom one and if you hit enter you'll have a diagonal line across and now you can select all these vertices right here and that's a very useful thing to have. So now it's the same as in object mode. If you find a vertice you want to move you just hit G and then you can move that vertice around. Now there is another way you can do this because I'm pretty sure a bunch of objects don't have a big spike. So normally what you'd have to do is you have to do this and if you wanted to make a curve you can do this and then like just do like a curve. But there's a much easier solution to this and that is the Blender, um, one of the newer add-ons is the proportional editing. So I'm going to click connected and then when I click and drag you'll notice that this happens and this is very useful because I can actually do the exact same thing and I can make something really cool without having to play with every single vertice. And you can see that's much quicker than having than when I did only half of the last one. And so now you can mess around. And now if I tab, you'll see that we have this. But it's really squarey or blockish. So there's a way to fix that, and that is to hit smooth under the shading tab. Now, 
you'll see it doesn't look very good, but that is because there's not enough vertices. Now there's a few ways you can add vertices. There's the subdivide, there's the knife, but then there's modifiers, and I'm going to get into that now. This is another thing you need to know, is that this, these tabs up here, this is the render, render layers, or render layers, yes, objects, um, scene, yes, world, objects, constraints, modifiers, mesh, material, texture, particles, and physics. You do not need to know all of this. I personally just go by the pictures. And the only ones you really need to know about are the render, the material, the texture, and the particle system. And that's about it. I'm going to click on the material. I'm actually going to click on the modifier. And here you'll see this. We have all these modifiers you can add. Now let's say we wanted to bevel it. Now that actually looks pretty decent because we can bevel this and we can give this a really cool effect by adding um, rounded off edges. And that's cool, but you'll still see that it's still somewhat square, so I'm going to minimize that. And I'm going to close this tab and I'm going to extend this so you can see that we have a bevel modifier. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add more vertices by using the subdivision surface. Now you can see it automatically becomes sharper and we can actually move these up and down and it will affect it because now the bevel is only occurring after the subdivision surface whereas below it it's the bevel is occurring and then all the subdivisions are added. So that's a neat little thing. It's a lot like Photoshop or GIMP if you've used it before, if you've used the software before where it's layers and you can do layers of modifiers. Now there's one more modifier I'd like to talk about and that is the array modifier and the array modifier is a really important modifier because well you can basically duplicate stuff as much as you want and you'll see I just added 163 of those guys but you can actually I'm going to set this to 1 and by playing around with settings you can actually I'm going to zoom out you can actually make stuff offset on an axis or a curve. And what that is, is basic, but you can, there's a lot of stuff you can do. All these modifiers are great. Mirror is really good. It allows you to mirror the mesh. So you don't have to, you can, only, you can do half of it and it will look the same on both sides. So that's a neat little feature. So now all these windows, you know we have these and this, but one of the windows that's really cool is that you can modify this. This does not need to be the default. You can actually go into the properties on the big one, that's down here, and you can go, you can mess around. You can go from the timeline down here to the text editor, and you can go to the info and all this stuff. You can even do all of this with the user preferences. You can do info. You can do all kinds of stuff, and that's a very, very, very useful thing. Okay, so that is really a basic introduction into Blender. We learned how to navigate around the scene. We also learned about the different windows and what they're used for. I showed you guys the different modes such as the object mode and the edit mode. And I also introduced you guys to modifiers. Now I hope to do some more on modifiers later in the series, but that was just an intro into how to get started with Blender. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you.